We'll be singing from our gospel in our song, hymn number 52, Count Me. When you count the ones who love the Lord, count me, count me. When you count up those who trust his word, count me, count me. When you count up those who are saved by grace, count me, count me. Who are found in Christ a hiding place, count me, count me. When you count up those who do the right, count me, count me. Who are walking in the gospel light, count me, count me. When you count up those who forward press, count me, count me. Who shall gain the crown of righteousness, count me, count me. Count me with the children of the heavenly king. Count me with the servants who would serve his bring. Count me with the ransomed who his praises sing. Count me, count me.
are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. Chapter 11 Chapter 11 And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taberah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a-lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again, and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of delium. And the people went about, and gathered it, and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them, that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the sucking child, unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh, that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the Spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people, among whom I am, are six hundred thousand footmen. And thou hast said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them, to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them, to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out, 
and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud, and spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that, when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Enviest thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses gat him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hateva, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibroth Hateva unto Haziroth, and abode at Haziroth. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the Word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
whatsoever he says unto you do it and as we pray i mentioned the name of jesus your miracle will meet you there the spirit of the lord is upon us because he has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent us to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and as the final amen if you are live the power of god is moving about touching everyone anything that is causing pain disease there just lay your hand raise up the other hand a miracle is coming your way with this mandate in hand we are on a journey to every corner of the world conveying the gospel to every creature in riches hardship merriment knocking on their doors spreading the sufficiency of jesus with the joy of the lord in abundance but there is another kind of yearning a thirst in the soul for something deeper to seize the people's search for something to fill the void in their minds. Jesus has gone ahead to prepare the grounds of Abba Abia State, Nigeria for a glorious transformation through Christ. From the 25th to the 30th of April 2024 at 1600 hours GMT every evening and on Sunday at 0700 hours GMT. Live in Abba Mega Mall beside Abba New Park, Osisioma Enugu Portakot Expressway, Abba. The power of the Lord is set to turn around the lives of all and sundry, and He is ready to perfect the affairs of all men, prepping change makers in the society and the world at large. Through His servant, Pastor Dr. W. F. Komuyi. Healing, health, miracle, wonders. Through the fortress of the gospel, lives will be turned around in Jesus' name. The city of Abba is about to witness the birth of prevailing stars in their schools, campuses, offices, orientation camps, youths that will become godly catalysts in this present world. Presenting the Impact Academy for Youths on the 27th of April 2024, at 0600 hours GMT at Abba Mega Mall, beside Abba New Park, Osisioma and Nugu Potakot Expressway, Abba. For every minister passing through a tough face in the journey of faith, for everyone seeking to grow in the journey of ministry, we bring to you the Ministers and Young Professionals Conference titled Strength for a Fainting Minister from the 26th 29th and 30th of April 2024 at 0700 hours GMT at Abba Mega Mall beside Abba New Park, Osisioma and Nugu Portakot Expressway, Abba. God is there already. We are ready. Abba, Abia State, are you ready? You know how weak a baby will be. And you know that's why the mother will concentrate on that baby, feed the baby, fellowship of the baby, help the baby to grow up, strengthen the baby. That's exactly the result of follow-up. When people, first of all, when they come to the Lord, they are babes in Christ. And that's the time for you to nurture them, train them in the way they should go, so that when they become older Christians, they will not depart from age. Now, if somebody has just become born again, and then you bring him to church, but even though they are hearing the word of God in the church, something is missing. They do not know how to have quiet time, how to wake up in the morning, have quiet. Nobody ever told them. And they live their Christian lives by the grace of God from what they are hearing in the Bible study and the Sunday fellowship and the Thursday meeting. Since they started coming to the church, they are finding their way and they are trying to plant their feet in the kingdom. And on their own, they will say, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm living the life. And they live, they do the best they can, but quiet time is missing. Then one day, maybe three years after being born again, and they'll be coming to church, there's a message on reading your Bible every day and praying every day. 
and they hear it now. But remember, he has been a Christian born again child of God for three years. He has not been having that regular quiet time. Nobody ever told him. And he's going to have real difficulty because it's now, it's already his habit not to have quiet time. And the quiet time will not be something he can just pick up like that. But if when he was very young, when he was just a day old, a week old, you went to him and you said, you know, there's something called quiet time. A time of quietness when you shut out all the noise around you and then you go into the watch of God. You just read a few verses. Here is something you can use. We call it daily manner. Here is something you can use higher every day. And then he's reading that from that young age. When he just came to know the Lord, he has started a quiet time. You'll find after 10 years in the Lord, he doesn't miss his quiet time because that's the way he was brought up when he was very, very young. Now you've made up your mind, you know, you must follow up. You must go to them. Personal contact. We're personally contacting them. We ought to, we must. And we must do it with urgency. They may be tracks. They may be books. There may be daily reading material that we're sending to them. Maybe a good Bible with a good concordance. We, we decide to buy it for them so that they'll be able to grow and develop appropriate audio tapes. You are sending it to them, or it may be CD that you are sending to them. You know, there are people that may have a wrong attitude. Well, they have done the preaching. And those people have come to the Lord. If they want to finish their work, let them do the follow-up themselves. It doesn't always work that way. We have done the preaching, and those people have come to know the Lord. It's now in your hand. You go and do the follow-up. That's how we have to do the follow-up. These are children. These are newcomers. These are babes in Christ. And you'll be gentle among those newcomers, and you'll be nursing them, cherishing them. You'll appreciate them. And you will make them to feel very important. You rejoice with any little discovery they make in the word of God. It may look ordinary to you. It says, uh, I, I thank God you came. I was reading something in the Bible this morning. And you think it's going to be a great, great revelation. And it says, uh, you know, I saw this in the word of God. And it points to the verse. And it's a very common verse to you. You must rejoice with him. This is a new discovery. Because this is a little child. And this is a little babe. And you are cherishing and nourishing him. When you do follow up, you will not go with a tired look. A tired voice. A tired worn out personality. As if they gave me the card. And what can I do if I don't come now? I'll be feeling guilty. Be excited. Let this fellow know that he's very precious and very dear unto you. And you cherish them and you nourish them. And you're doing it with all joy and happiness. I pray you will keep them. And they will not be lost. And on the final day, according to your consecration, commitment, and vow, they'll be with the Lord and be with us together in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Why don't you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I will do it. I've heard your word. I commit myself to you. And everybody said, I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name, the Lord appreciates your coming. And you also need to appreciate your coming. The Bible study is the backbone of the believer. I will thank the Lord who has seen us through having the Bible study all these years from 1973 till date. And I pray that until we see him face to face, we will continue studying his word, learning his word, and living by that word in jesus name bring your whole family tell your friends tell our members tell those who do not understand the importance of the bible study impress it on them they'll come with you i said he'll come with you and the lord will reward you for such a service in jesus name father well, thank you for bringing us to the Bible study. It's your spirit that has kept the interest in us. And we pray the working of the spirit 
will never leave us in Jesus name as we study today implant your word your nature and the life of Christ in every one of us in Jesus name and confirm every promise in your word every provision in your word every proclamation in your word confirm each in every life lord thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray headquarters say amen before you sit down we're coming to james chapter 2 and from james chapter 2 we're reading from verse 1 my brethren had not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons, with partiality. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment tells us in verse 3 it says and ye have respect to him that wears the gay good shining clothing and say unto him sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor stand thou there or sit here under my footstool verse 4 are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts in verse 5 it says hacking my beloved brethren have not as not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him look at verse 6 in verse 6 but ye have despised the poor do not reach men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Verse 7. In verse 7 it says, do, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. It's asking a lot of questions, a number of questions to make us think and to make us see the way we accept the faith believe the faith was delivered unto the saints and the way we practice what we learn from the faith was delivered unto the saints when the bible says you are earnestly content for the faith was delivered unto the saints it's talking about the teaching about the doctrines about the revelations about everything connected with the faith in christ and now he's uh, asking uh, the believers is writing to the way you practice the way you do and the way you act your character does it show that you have a balanced understanding a balanced approach to the faith to the word the lord has revealed and is telling us having respect of persons having partiality and either in the word of god you accept this or reject that you accept that person you reject that person or you do well to another person and then you relegate other people to the background it says if you're living like that you are taking the faith of jesus christ with respect of persons if your obedience to the lord depends on the official appearances of people if your goodness if your righteousness if your practical life depends on what you see of them how high they are how low other people are and if it's when you you know it makes me feel good 
he honors me he respects me he knows how to lift up somebody so i will bench to him i will honor him i will apply the word of god when he talks to me but he he doesn't care for anybody he just looks and he goes on i doesn't show special respect unto me so i will not obey the word of god when it comes to him or even comes from him is saying you have the real faith the genuine faith the transparent faith the faith that shows that what you care for is the word of god is the revelation of the word of god are you just uh, you know, acting as if you really don't have the faith but you show respect of persons that's why we're looking at the teaching of the word of god today the scripture based impartiality of true brethren in christ in christ coming to Christ when you are born again or you give your life to the Lord when he says behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in unto him you in him and he in you in Christ brethren those who are brothers and sisters in the family of God Jesus Christ said these who hear the word of God and do it. They are my mother, my brother, my sister. We form the family of God because we do the word of God. We're looking at him, we're seeing him, we're obeying him, and we're following the very steps of Christ. Then we'll become brothers and sisters in the family of God, sons and daughters of God, brethren in Christ, true brethren in Christ, they are false brethren, they say they are born again, their life doesn't show it the false brethren they look at the word of God they do not have the true faith in Christ the penetration of the word of God is not in them they are false, but the people who are true that the people that know Christ as their personal savior, they are the people that know Christ and they know the word of Christ and live by the word of Christ. They are nominal Christian, they are church going Christian, they are superficial Christian. There are people who do not have the spirit of God bearing witness in their hearts that they are children of God. God does not reckon with them. We don't reckon with them too. But the people who are born again, the new creatures in Christ, all things have passed away and all things have become new. They are the true brethren in Christ. How do they live? They live in a Bible-based impartiality. They do not take one part of the word of God and then reject the other part. They have impartiality because the true brethren in Christ tonight, the scripture based impartiality of true brethren in Christ. We're looking at three things in the study today. Number one, the blessed faithfulness and impartiality of the Lord of glory. That's of Jesus Christ himself. The Lord of glory. He is the one we follow. He is a perfect example. He is our model. And he says we'll walk in the steps of Christ. And he has the blessed faithfulness and impartiality. And we labor after his perfect example. Number two, the brotherly fellowship. Brotherly fellowship without partiality, living by his gospel. Number three, the blameless followers with perseverance of the life of godliness. Let's look at number one. Number one, the blessed faithfulness and impartiality of the Lord of glory. In James chapter 2, reading here from verse 1, my brethren, brethren, actually 
James, the writer of this epistle, he calls brethren, 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 a lot of times to show he wasn't writing to sinners, he was writing to the people who know the Lord, who love the Lord, and who love the word of God, and they live by the word of God. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. He calls Jesus Christ the Lord of glory. The Lord of is the Lord of grace, is the Lord of godliness. In the Lord of the godly and in the Lord of glory. The Lord of glory with respect of persons. He wants us to understand that Christ, the Christ will follow is an impartial Christ. The Christ will follow is the one that followed the Father through and through without any partiality. Look at three things here. We're looking at uh, number one, the God of glory impartial without respect of persons number two the lord of glory perfectly free from respect of persons number three the lifters of his glory impartial without respect of persons look at number one number one is the lord of glory impartial without respect of persons we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 2 acts chapter 7 verse 2 and he said men brethren fathers hakim the god of glory appeared unto a father abraham when he was in mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan. this god the father referred to as the god of glory and god the son jesus christ referred to as lord of glory i and my father are one one in nature, one in attributes, and one in glory. I and my Father, as the Father God in heaven is referred to as the God of glory, so Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, is also referred to as the Lord of glory. Hey, look at Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7. In Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7, Wherefore, now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity. Waste the Lord our God, no respect of persons, no taking of bribes. Because he's God of glory, and because he's Lord of glory, no bribery, no corruption. You'll expect that if somebody is holy, there'll be no bribery or corruption. If somebody is holy and righteous, God is holy. He cannot have he cannot accept, he cannot think of taking bribes from people. There are people that think they'll bribe God with whatever. And some people think they'll bribe God with fasting. They're living in sin. They're living against the word of God. But they think they'll bribe God with fasting. Other people think they'll bribe God with calling him some big, big names. They think God is like man. When you call them by those special titles and uh, by those special names, their heads swell up and they are proud. They think God is like that. You cannot bribe God with any of those uh, things. Other people think they can bribe God with money. They bring ba their bags, money bags, and then they bring uh, if your life is not right, if your life is wicked, crooked, or evil, sinful, you cannot bribe God with anything because He is the Lord of glory and He doesn't take bribe, He doesn't have respect of persons. Deuteronomy chapter 10, reading from verse 17. Deuteronomy 10, verse 17 For the Lord your God. 
is God, the God of gods and Lord of laws, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He does not regard the physical, natural beauty of a man, of a woman. Absalom was more handsome than anybody in the land, but his handsomeness or his beauty did not bribe God. That fellow still died as a rebellious son and went to the other side. Whatever we have in the natural, however we look in the natural, it does not make God to honor us if there's no repentance, if there's no faith in Christ, if there is no righteousness in our lives. Acts chapter 10, we're reading here from verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. And if we believers are truly children of God, and God bears witness with your heart, you are a child of God, we will live like he lived. Will apply the standard of the Bible in the same uniform way with everybody. What God says, He does. And if we are children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, if we are ministers of the gospel, if we are pastors in the church of the living God, that same character of God must be seen in us we're no respect our persons we don't take bribes we don't do something for people who are, that is so scriptural giving them a place and giving them a position that God has not given them and it will take the grace of God it will take the salvation of God it will take real sanctification to so live that we don't look at the faces of people we live by the word i pray god will give you an eye the grace to so live look at number two here number two the lord of glory perfectly free from respect of persons it tells us in matthew chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 16 matthew 22 verse 16 and they sent out unto him their disciples with the herodians saying master we know that thou art true we know that thou art true and really they knew although they came with pretense but they knew although they came wanting to tempt him but they knew although they came wanting to take a word from him and use his own word to persecute him uh, that's what Herodians uh, do that's what persecutors do they will use you to destroy you they will use you to defame you they will carve out a word you said they will cut off a word you say and post it somewhere and they use your word quoted out of context to destroy you to defame you and to destroy your ministry that, that's what the Herodians did and that's what the persecutors of those days and of today too that's what they do and they sent out from them out unto him their disciples with the Herodians saying master they don't mind what good name they call you they can just strip you we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth neither carest thou for any man neither carest thou for 
any man then it says for thou regardest not the person of man and we know that about christ are we christians are we christ-like do we live like that do we behave like that somebody said if, if a person is helping me if a person is um, supporting me if a person is taking good care of me i don't care what he does i don't care what she does i will always back him up i mean no he's wrong I mean, no, he's not living right. I mean, no, he's going astray. I mean, no, he's a backslider. I mean, no, that he or she is on her way to hell. It doesn't matter to me, to them. They say, if anybody is helping them, if anybody is uh, supporting them, if anybody has been so kind to them, they will blindly support him. Ah. Christ was not like that. Christ based his dealings with people on the word of God, not on he gave me butter, gave me bread, he sugared my tea, he did something for me, so even if he's going to hell, I'm going to support him going to hell. I'll not want to make him unhappy because he supports me. That one is not a Christian. That's what we call the milk of human nature. The milk of human nature. I'm going to support them. I'm going to regard them, whoever they are, because they helped me in the past. Christ taught the word in truth and christ lived for the truth i pray you and i will be like christ in romans chapter 2 reading from verse 9 romans chapter 2 verse 9 tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the jew first and also of the gentile you would have thought because these are the descendants of abraham that god will support them blindly no jew or gentile yes the same word the same way to get saved the same doctrine to remain steadfast he has the same word and the same thing with us who are believers we walk in the same way and we deal with different people the same way according to the word of god look at verse 10 in verse 10 and with glory and honor and peace to every man that walketh good that's what you are looking for that's what we're looking for we're not looking at you know the facial appearance we're not looking at their handsomeness we're not looking at their beauty we're not looking at their tribe we're not looking whether they come from my tribe or not we're not looking at their nation they come from my nation no the thing we're looking for in everyone everyone we relate with everyone we interact with is is that he walketh good not that he walked good in the past but it's not a backslider not that he's promising us i'll walk good i'll do good in the future today at the present time the grace of god abides in him he walketh good to the jew force and also to the greek whether they're jew or they're greek the same thing all the lord is looking for is that they have humbled themselves he has given them grace and they keep on humbling themselves and he gives them more grace to keep on walking good look at verse 11 in verse 11 for there is no respect of persons with god my friend can you ever be like god godly like god godlike can you live like god or is it in your nature and it's irreversible for you that you live looking at the faces of people 
looking at what they're doing for you and so you cannot really have the backbone you cannot have the courage you cannot have the consistency of living like god that you are not a respecter of persons for there is no respect of persons with god look at verse 16 there in verse 16 in the day when god shall judge the secrets of men by jesus christ according to my gospel we're looking at james chapter 3 verse 17 james chapter 3 in verse 17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure any kind of wisdom that leads to impurity any kind of wisdom that makes you entrenched established in iniquity impurity that's not god's wisdom the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable peaceable now that will have peace my friend if you compromise you're too strong you have such a strong conviction you're too biblical scriptural and we don't we don't want that and so we'll be at peace with you if you will compromise forget it forget it we cannot compromise the word of god and allow ourselves to go to hell just because we want to be at peace with that's why it says if it be possible as much as it lies in you live in peace with all men if it be possible how if you don't have to compromise if you don't have to be partial if you don't have to let go your conviction if you don't have to do anything that will make you disobedient unto god be at peace if it be possible but if they say the condition of being at peace is that you have to compromise and all that you have learned in the word of god all these many years drop them and it will be at peace forget about that kind of peace the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and of good fruits without partiality without partiality and that's the wisdom god has to say you know that the man is not wise he doesn't understand that in leadership you have to compromise in leadership you have to you know play favoritism in leadership you cannot treat everybody the same you have to you know put people in their place and then other people you just have to say yes sir yes sir yes sir. Uh -uh. that's not the wisdom from above that's the psychology of the world but it says the wisdom which is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy the lord help us amen, amen. and the lord grant us the firmness the conviction the consistency to know this is the way the way to live in the gospel and the way to live to please God, walk ye therein. The Lord help us to walk therein. Look at number three. Number three is the leaders of his glory. Impartial without respect of person. The leaders of his glory. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 21. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21, my son, fear thou the Lord and the King.
and meddle not with them that are given to change. Christians, believers, sons, daughters of God should not meddle with them that are given to change. The people who change like chameleons. Today, they're like this. When they're looking for a job, they are like that. When they're looking for a wife to marry, they are like that. When they're looking for a husband, they are, you, can't, you can't trust them. They're not dependable. You cannot say, I know, that's how sister so and so will act, will behave. No. Her behavior depends on the changing climate. Her behavior depends on the changing interaction she has with people. You cannot say I depend on brother so-and-so. That's exactly how he will act. No. Their actions, their behaviors, their character depends on the changing circumstances. But you know, children of God, it says, my son, my daughter, Fear thou the king and the, and the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. The Lord do that in us in Jesus' name. Meddle not, meddle not, meddle not with them that are given to change. Because it says in verse 22, in verse 22, for their calamity. Those who are given to change, those who are like chameleons, those who cannot depend upon, you cannot trust them. The calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? Look at verse 23. In verse 23, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good. It is not right. It is not righteous. It is not expected to have respect of persons in judgment. It is not right. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Anybody you are, you know, relating with is low, is high, is big, it's moderate, two plus three is always five. We don't say, okay, because of him, he doesn't calculate the way everybody calculates. Two plus three is, then you mention a kind of figure. No. In science, two plus three, always five. In behavior, two plus three, always five. Whoever we're dealing with, the scripture is always the same. How do we modify the Bible for him? And we cannot modify scientific knowledge for him. That's not right. How do we exalt science above the word of God? There is no respect of persons with God, and it says it is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. The Lord give us the grace that we will abide by the clear, straightforward, simple teaching of the Word of God in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 5. We're reading from verse 20. In First Timothy chapter 5 verse 20, it says, Them that sin rebuke before all oh, somebody says we cannot do that today because there are people there who are friends to the people that sin the people there who they don't care what people have done they might speak in the face of god that doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is that my friend is untouchable. My friend is incorrigible. You cannot correct him. Going to hell 
leave him alone he's my friend going to perdition leave him alone he's my friend pastor do your work preach preach the word but don't correct anybody don't point the right way to anyone how can we do what are we teaching if you cannot emphasize the word in everybody's life what are we teaching then it says them that sin rebuke before all that they that others also may fear it's not the preacher to fear the people who are preaching to but the people that do not lay by the standard of the word of god our action should make them fear because of the judgment that will come upon them in verse 21 in verse 21 it says i charge thee before god and the lord jesus christ that and the elect elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality do you include that in your christian life do you include that in your profession of sanctification do you include that in your understanding of the practice of the righteous principles of the lord that you do nothing by partiality and that you do not prefer one above before beyond the other i pray that these words will become the watch word in the life of every one of us in jesus name Amen. Amen. Number point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the brotherly fellowship without partiality, living by his gospel. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, fresh focus on brethren in the faith. Number two, faultless fellowship among brethren without favoritism number three is forthright faithfulness in builders of the faith let's look at number one number one fresh focus on brethren in the faith uh, look at uh, the, how the spirit of god inspired the apostle to write to the brethren the brethren the bread look at chapter one in chapter one verse two my brethren that's the word count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations and trials don't mourn don't be sorrowful don't be crying look at verse 16 in verse 16 do not err my beloved brethren look at verse 19 in verse 19 wherefore my beloved brethren is writing to brethren let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath slow to wrath don't wear your feelings on the skin that every little thing you flare up every little thing you are angry where is the conversion that's how we are in the world a little sentence makes people angry in the world a look make people angry makes people angry in the world you see a particular word different from the way you use it makes them angry why how do we do that then you were converted now and we're brethren and the same attitude anger anger in the home anger on the road anger in the bus anger in anywhere the anger in the church anger in the presence of no it says my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath look at verse 20 in verse 20 for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of god you know my brother my sister 
Anger does not improve anything in the church. Anger does not make us more righteous, more holy, more rapturable. No, because the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Look at chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 1. In chapter 2, verse 1, my brethren have not, brethren again, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, hacking, my beloved brethren. Uh, James is just saying, I'm writing to the brethren. I'm writing to the people who are supposed to have the grace of God and that grace of God has converted them, transformed them. They know more people in the world they are the brethren and it says, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. Look at verse 14. In verse 14 it says, What does it profit my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can that faith empty faith save him hey, look at uh, chapter 3 now verse 1 in chapter 3 verse 1 it says my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation because if we are masters we are speakers we are preachers and yet we are not doers of the word condemnation comes and hey, look at verse 10 in verse 10 out of the same man proceeded blessing and cursing my brethren he's writing to the brethren and in every chapter he's saying my brethren my brethren these things ought not so to be look at verse 12 in verse 12 can the fig tree my brethren he's writing to brethren bear only berries either a vine fig so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh it tells us in chapter 4 verse 11 chapter 4 verse 11 is still writing to brethren it says speak not evil of another if you have a brother if you have the grace of god the grace of god controls us restrains us restricts us that because of the grace of God in us, we're able to moderate our conversations. We're able to restrain our conversations. It says, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, of his sister too, and judgeth his brother, his sister speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law. But a judge. Look at chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 7. In chapter 5, verse 7, be patient therefore, brethren. The world doesn't have the ability or the strength to be, to be patient. They are in a hurry, 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 hurry. But those who are brethren, those who are born again, those who are children of God, it says because we're brethren and we take after Christ, we can be patient, be patient. Therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, Behold, the husband man waiteth for the precious fruit and of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, Grudge not one against another true believers, Bible-believing believers, 
righteous believers, rapturable believers. We're not carrying this uh, pregnancy of grudges, grudges, grudges all about. I grudge him for this, I grudge him for that. He grudges another person, grudges another person, and it carries a lot of weight, a lot of load of grudges. It says, grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned, behold, the judge standeth before the door. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, but above all things, my brethren, he's talking to brethren. And when you come to read the epistle according to James, if you're a child of God, a brother, a sister, you play, pay close attention because it's reaching for you, reaching for me, reaching for the brethren. It says, but above all things, my brethren, swear not at all, neither by heaven, neither by the earth. And the people in the habit of saying, I swear, I swear, I swear by heaven. Christian, believer, the word of God is very clear. If you're a real child of God, just affirm your word. I'm a child of God, I won't tell you a lie. This is what actually happened. Actually, actually, the people who swear by heaven, I swear, I swear, they tell a lot of lies. And they want you to believe them because they say, I swear, I swear, a believer is not in the habit of swearing. When anybody talks to you and he says, I swear, just tell them straight. You don't have to swear. Are you not a believer? Tell me what's on your heart. Are you trying to use God, I swear, to now propound a lie? It says, above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, chapter 5, it says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him. Brethren, any of you, brethren, he backslides, he becomes a sinner. If he dies in that condition, he dies as a sinner, and it goes to hell. But brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, look at verse 20, it says, let him know that he which converted the sinner, one of you, a backslider, is now the sinner. He that which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at faultless fellowship among brethren without favoritism. Without favoritism. Look at Leviticus chapter 19. We're reading from verse 15. Leviticus chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the persons of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbor. That's Old Testament. That's under the old covenant. That's before the great grace came. 
into the lives of the people of God. He said, even at that time, even at that time, he said, we will not have respect or due respect, special respect for the mighty. Neither are we going to respect a person because he's poor. He says everything we do in judgment, everything we do in evaluating the lives of people, we do in righteousness. Thou shalt, uh, shalt thou, in, thou shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. Verse 21. In Proverbs 28, 21, to have respect of persons is not good. Anytime in the church, at the marriage committee, in the in choosing workers, in appointing people, in putting people in places of responsibility. It says to have respect of persons is not good. We shouldn't go by tribe. He speaks my language. It's from our extended family. Is the son, is the daughter of my uncle. No. It says to have respect of persons is not good. You know, your friend is not stable. Your friend is not steadfast and he confides in you, my friend. I can only tell you, I can't tell other people, look at what I did, look at what I did. And I don't know whether the pastor has an idea about it or not. Because, um, you know, for a saint, the pastor doesn't smile wide the way he used to do to me. Don't worry, come. And then they come, and this fellow, he knows that his friend is a sinner, a backslider, an adulterer, a fornicator. He knows that his friend is a wayward person, but he's my friend. And he says, Pastor, Pastor, because he thinks he has good access to me. And you look at them, you see they come to play and gamble in the church so that we will be lenient on the sinners and let them remain in their pollution. You know, friend, to have respect of persons is not good. For a piece of bread, that man will transgress. Look at Jude chapter 1 verse 16. Jude chapter 1 Verse 16, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. I pray the Lord will set every one of us right, ready for the rapture in Jesus' name. You know, I'm going to say another amen. amen. Look at number three here. Number three here, we're looking at forthright faithfulness by builders of the faith. Those who are called to build the faith of others and even to build your own faith. We need to have forthright faithfulness. You're not looking at the faces of people. You're not looking at you know, the standing of people. You're not looking at the title of people. You know, title is just to make a difference between this is what he does is a preacher this is what he does is another kind of title that's, uh, that's what the title is for but the title doesn't take anybody to heaven so if you're sitting on a title if you're holding on to a title if you're uplifting yourself by a title why don't you remember it's just title it means nothing in the sight of the Lord. What matters is holiness, follow peace, and holiness with all men, without which no man shall seek the Lord. That's what matters. Who shall say to the heel of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? They that have clean hands. That's what matters. 
and a pure heart that's what matters who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity that is what matters forthrightness forthright faithfulness in builders of the faith in jude chapter 1 reading from verse 20 jude chapter 1 verse 20 but she beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost verse 21 in verse 21 keep yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life and look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling it will keep you and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy verse 25 unto him be unto him the only wise god our savior the glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever amen, amen. amen. look at uh, luke chapter 18 verse 8 Luke 18 verse 8 I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith faithfulness on the earth when the son of man cometh shall he find righteousness holiness purity impartiality transparency faith on the earth he will find a lot of hypocrisy when he comes he'll find a lot of partiality respect of persons when he comes he'll find a lot of superficiality when he comes People that will not have any principle, will not have any kind of firm stand, conviction. Many of the people, as the Lord is coming, they don't even think about the Lord's coming. And there's so much righteousness in people who are supposed to be saved and sanctified. That's why he asked, he said, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith, fidelity, faithfulness on the earth? Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 5. Hebrews 11 verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, before the rapture that happened to him he had this testimony that he pleased God men pleasers will not make it people pleasers will not make it society pleasers if I don't please them I don't like any discomfort if I don't please them I feel uncomfortable but it will hinder you from making it and the rapture if you're always pleasing people they want a lie to be told you volunteer they want something bad to be done you volunteer because you are then you become the one that everybody loves everybody appreciates you want anybody to do anything wrong call him call him he'll do it for us people pleasers will not make it what's your goal why are you in the faith why are you a christian why are you a believer before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased god look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says but without faith and faithfulness to him it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of 
them that diligently seek him. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the blameless followers with perseverance of the life of godliness. It tells us in James chapter 2, reading there from verse 5, Hakim, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him, verse 6. In verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not reach men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seeds, verse 7. In verse 7, do not dare blaspheme the worthy name by the which ye are called. They blaspheme the name of the Lord. They say, you know, we, we knew the, we know the deeper life as of old. You won't get them to compromise on anything. You can threaten to take their job. You can threaten to oppress them, persecute them. You can threaten to make them suffer. But deeper life of old, they stand like that rock of Gibraltar. No wind moves them. But look at him. He says it's deeper life. And look at what will make him to do. Look at how we'll make him to compromise. Look at her. She says she's deep alive. But look at her. Look at the things she does. That deep alive that we knew of those days they kept to the Bible. They'll never do anything like that. You know, you make the people outside, outside the kingdom, to blaspheme the name of the Lord because they cannot see you abiding in the word of God. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. Look at verse, uh, okay, that's verse 7. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the righteous heirs of the promised kingdom. Number two, the reproached heirs in the present kingdom, that the worldly kingdom, that the earthly kingdom. Number three, the rich heirs of the prevailing kingdom. Look at number one. Number one, the righteous heirs of the promised kingdom. It tells us in James chapter 2 verse 5. James chapter 2 verse 5. Hakin, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 it tells us for ye you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh nor many mighty nor many noble are called verse 27 it says but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty verse 28 it says, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised at God chosen, yea, the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit 
of God they are the sons of God look at that again as many as are led by the spirit of the world they are the sons of the world as many as are led by the spirit of Adam giving excuse 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 as many as are led by the spirit of Adam they are the sons of Adam as many as are led by the spirit of society they are the offspring of society they are not born again yet but when you are born again and you come to know the Lord and you live by the grace that comes from the Lord as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God verse 15 in verse 15 for ye are not, have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear then the spirit of bondage captures the soul captures the mind and you do not have the chance the liberty the freedom to do the will of god and to obey the word of god you live under fear when you are by yourself you live under fear when you are with people you live under fear and when you are in the church where there should be freedom because the lord has set us free free to live and free to act and free to believe and free to soar so we can get to heaven not ashamedly and you know you know uh, kind of uh, you're buying down your head i'm going to I'll have conviction i don't want my conviction to be known if there's any place where should be bold it's in the church where we have the father the son the holy spirit and we have the people of god encouraging us but even in the church the people are so much afraid something is wrong with that person it says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father look at verse 16 verse 16 the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God verse 17 in verse 17 and eight children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified with him you'll be glorified with him number two we're looking at the reproached heirs of the present kingdom that's the present kingdom of the world they live in such a way that there's reproach. They belittle the church because of them. They belittle Christ because of them. Reproach comes through them. And the Lord wants us to get away from all that so that we'll be bringing glory to God all the time. James chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. In James chapter 2, verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seeds. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which ye are called. Before you do anything, you should ask yourself, if I do that, the people who watch me do that, will they honor Christ? Will they blaspheme Christ? The people you interact with and you show an ungodly 
unrighteous, carnal, fleshly, immoral interaction. Those people have might to think. Those some believers or those backsliders or those so-called members of the church, they think, they say, okay, I understand I'm like this because I know this is my level, but look at this man high in the church. Look at this woman high in the church. Look at how they behave. They blaspheme the name of the Lord by which you are called. Now, if people blaspheme the name of the Lord by your action, by your behavior, and you know, sometimes it's, even in the open, you forget yourself, and the people who are watching you display a kind of carnal behavior to say, why is this fellow doing like this? Even in the secret sanctuary of the Lord. And if they are not careful, they blaspheme the name of the Lord because of you. Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by the which ye are called? I pray God will help all of us. He will help you. He will help me. So people will not blaspheme the Lord because of the, of the others. They profess to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, you know it's not true. They are not filled with the Holy Ghost if people blaspheme the name of God through them. Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. In Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 9, it says... I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Amen. 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 And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. The people who claim were Jews, but God said, Jesus said, they are the synagogue of Satan. The people who say, I belong to Christ, and in life, in behavior, in character, they deny him. I pray you will not be like that. We're looking at number three here. Number three here, we're looking at the rich heirs of the prevailing kingdom. The rich heirs of the prevailing kingdom. We're looking at um, James chapter 2 verse 5. In James chapter 2 verse 5, Hakina, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, rich in faith, rich in faith. When we're rich in faith, we're rich in grace because we can pray by faith and we get more grace. Well, we reach in faith, we reach in love because we can pray and the love of God will flow into our lives and through our lives. When we reach in the, we reach in faith, we reach in the in the truth, the truth of the word of God. So it reaches our lives, and then from us it enriches the lives of all the people. When we reach in faith, we reach in the fruit of the spirit because it is the faith we pray, and then the faith we reach in will then be pronounced in us. Us, rich in faith, you are rich in love, you are rich in, you are rich in joy. The joy of the Lord will be your strength because you are rich in faith, you are rich in godliness, you are rich in holiness because that faith, the true faith, will bring godliness and holiness into your life. When you are rich in faith, you are rich in hope because your hope is grounded in the Lord, affirmed in the Lord. You are rich in faith, you are rich in good action in activity because faith without works is dead you're reaching faith you're reaching uh, 
action that will benefit other people. He says, my brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him tonight with all that we have studied we want to come before the Lord by faith and we want our faith to get anywhere we are deficient anywhere we are lacking anywhere we have not been who we ought to be we believe in God it will enrich our faith I said it will enrich our faith and we will live by the face of the Son of God who loved us and he died for us gave himself for us let's rise up now and let's talk to the Lord in prayer let's talk to the Lord in prayer because he can enrich our lives enrich our faith one thing he wants us to understand that he is the Lord of glory he is the Lord of glory why do you acknowledge him as you are standing there as you are praying there acknowledge him he is the Lord of glory. He is the God of glory and he is impartial, impartial. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why? Because he is impartial. He's impartial. If he blessed others, he's going to bless you too. If he transformed others, he's going to transform you too. He changed Saul and became Paul the apostle. He changed his nature, it changed his life, it changed his uh, pursuit, it changed everything about him. And you see, God who is no respecter of persons, and because of that, he'll answer your prayer to you. But you must desire, you must desire to have the very nature of the Lord and the very character of Christ, the Lord of glory tell him so that that grace will increase in your life that glory will increase in your life and it'll change you from grace to grace from glory to glory from strength to strength and you'll be stronger and stronger in the Lord and God will give you the backbone to be able to stand not having respect of persons not living your life impartiality not living your life in respect of persons, not living your life in favoritism, tribalism, but you stand straight, firm, transparent, and whatever you do for A, that's what you'll do for B. And you will not be, you know, after people because they give you money. They give you material things. I say, I can never, I can never say anything negative, even if it's the truth, because he gives me this and gives me that. That's respect of persons. That's depending on bribes. That's the nature of the people of the world. But to show the nature of Christ. No respect of person. Neither fear nor favor. You're not doing anything because I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I shouldn't do that. But I fear. I shouldn't say that. But if I didn't say that, I fear what they will do. How they will act. I shouldn't stand that firm, but I fear spirit of bondage again to fear. You're not serving the Lord wholeheartedly. If the fear of man is what controls you, favor, the favor they show me, the flattery they give me. The human honor they give me. And if I don't keep on bending to them, compromising on their behalf, they will lessen the favor. Okay, you are living for favor. You are not living in faith. 
not living for heaven. Why don't you become a real believer, transparent believer, impartial believer, a standing believer, steadfast in the things of the Lord? You know the truth, and you live and walk in that truth. Tell the Lord, I'll grant you more grace. So I will not remain jellyfish, no backbone, can't stand, worried, anxious about what people do. Why are you worried about that? They have a life to live. The judgment is in the hand of God. Live by the standard principle of righteousness that you have learned you won't allow fear of man favor from man to make you partial to make you hypocritical You don't really respect the person, but you act as if I respect. Why? Why? Say the right thing. Do the right thing. Whatever you can say behind him, say in front of him. What are you afraid of? No partiality. Interviewing people, recommending people, giving people title, no partiality, no tribalism, no favoritism. Live by the conviction you have in your heart. Pray and pray in faith. And pray with commitment. That kind of prayer that brings virtue from heaven into your life, into our lives. And you can honor the Lord of glory by having the nature and the attributes of the Lord of glory. You please the God of glory by having faith in Him and living faithfully for Him, through Him, by Him. And the one that lifts us, lifts us in glory. The lifter of his glory. Are you in turn? You lift up that glory. Looking unto him all the time. And living by him, by his grace, by his truth all the time. Brotherly fellowship. Are you a brother? Are you a brother, you're a sister. Whatever temptation comes, you resist the tempter, whoever he is. You resist the temptress, whoever she is. After all, you are not living to please her, you are not living to please him. A living to please God, the God of glory. Fresh focus on who brethren are. 
If you're a true brother, a true member of the family of God, Christ is your focus. Christ likeness is your focus. The brother, the sister, beloved in the Lord. God's glory will be your focus, not your ease, my ease, what I like, the smiles of the people. That's not the focus. Your focus is God's glory. In the day and in the night. Before the king, before the poor, God's glory. Why don't you have fresh focus on that? Faultless fellowship. Not fellowship in pretense. Fellowship in hypocrisy. No. Transparent fellowship. And whatever should not be in the fellowship of the saints, you see it courageously point it out. That's your focus. So we bring God glory. Forthright. Forthright faithfulness. Forthright. Forthright. You are not meandering. You are not meddling with those who are giving to change. You are forthright. They know you for something that you stand on what is truth. Consequence, don't worry about that. Pressure, don't worry about that. They might call you names. What's your concern about that? Your concern is to have focus on bringing glory unto God. Be a blameless follower of Christ. No dirty scene behind the curtain, behind the door. Holy, godly, righteous. Whoever stands, whoever falls, you stand. Whoever backslides, whoever lives in a way they blaspheme the name of the Lord, that's not your concern. You focus on being righteous, being godly, dependable, Trustworthy, uncompromising, stand. Let everyone who knows you know 
that you are not going to compromise because of any favor they are doing to you or anything negative they can do towards you let the people know who you are where you stand how you live that you have made up your mind to follow Christ transparently not cutting corners no partiality no respect of persons In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's good. Another headquarters. Amen. Amen. Father, we surrender, we submit, heart, spirit, soul, even our body, unto you and to your will. That Lord, by your grace, in your strength, by your spirit, all these uh, attributes and attitudes of men, partiality, respect of persons, hypocrisy, Lord, we reject them from today in Jesus' name. The grace to stand, to stand like the brethren, like sons and daughters in the kingdom of God without gambling with our souls like the people of the world do you, Lord. We commit ourselves completely now unwaveringly before you. Help us and grant us the grace so to do in Jesus' name. Lord, all the vacillations of the past, all the changing and meddling with the those who are given to change of the past forgive and cleanse us from them in jesus name now from now on anywhere we are we will not compromise we will not bend to the people who are looking for slaves slaves to their evil lives we will not compromise with anyone the grace to stand the backbone to stand the strength of the spirit to stand give us Lord in Jesus name when we ought to say no give us the grace to say no whoever we need to say no to any time, every time. The power, the courage of mind, the backbone of conviction to say no to them, give it to us in Jesus' name. Everywhere we go, everywhere we find ourselves, we'll have this fresh focus, daily focus, consistent focus, to focus on bringing glory unto the Lord. Day by day, living like Christ. No partiality. No hypocrisy. No pretense. No fear of man. No bending to evil people. Lord, we thank you. Your health people of old you will help us we we'll pray Lord from this very moment we we'll begin to practice it no respect of persons no partiality no hypocrisy no bending down to evil but living our lives in holiness righteousness before you all the days of our lives in Jesus name
Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.